Good morning and welcome to Phantom's House. It's a prototype of Entrepreneurship Island here in Silicon Valley. So what's a hacker house? Well, a hacker house is what Entrepreneurship Island is. It's a place for people who do their startups to come together to work independently or together on their startup and also live together. It's kind of like a dorm for launching your startups. Now, the problem is in Silicon Valley, it's really expensive. It's $150 a night at a hotel. So when you can basically find a place for $30 a night and $36 a night or day, $36 a day, it includes all you can eat food, right? You got all this food here and you can prepare your food then ultimately it's a great deal if you want to stay here for a month or two months or whatever here in Silicon Valley because it just becomes too expensive. So what this talk's going to be is about basically what you should be doing and managing. If you're running a hacker house or if you're running or wanting to run a founder's house, I'm going to do basically my management system or house management system and I'm making videos because I want you to improve your system and what you're doing by sharing what I've discovered and what I'm doing. So notice it's already 6.30. I've actually been up since 5.30. I'm not sleeping in. Usually I'm up around two or three. Now, I'm unique. My family's in Japan. One uh, is 6 p.m. So two is seven. Three at the latest, latest is eight. And I have a five-year-old and a seven-year-old that I desperately miss and uh, desperately miss their dad. But I'm here in Silicon Valley launching Fountain Tiles because, you know, if I can't save the planet for them, their planet, because, you know, I'm already young, middle age, then, you know, there's no future for them. And I'm not going to make a video today on why the planet needs saving. No, not the, our planet needs saving. The planet doesn't need saving. Our planet needs saving. This planet which shares our, you know, we share, you know, the, the DNA. That's crisis and if you don't believe me just watch the documentaries on Netflix get off Fox just submerge yourself into that but I'm not gonna talk about it today so what I do first the first thing I do is walk around the toilets I check the bathroom what am I looking for first I look at the toilets make sure that there's no fecal matter now understand I guarantee in your hacker house or hotel or if you have a community or your dorm people leave their toilet lids up now what happens when you leave your toilet lit up and flush, it sprays out your urine and your fecal matter all over in this fine mist spray. You're breathing it in, so if someone is sick, you're catching their cold that way. It's getting on your damn towels, it's getting on your damn thing. So, you know, I have a sign on mine saying, please keep me shut. And I'm actually now trying to educate people about fecal matter and about urine, you know, particles that are basically food. It's nitrogen for, you know, bad bacteria. And if you have a damp environment, mats and towels, they're going to grow. So then you're washing your body down. So one of the problems that you're going to find is trying to educate the people coming in because you have cultures from all over and, and you know, people have been spending most of their life leaving their toilet seat up if they even have one. I mean, some people wipe their ass with their hand without any toilet paper, okay? Not their right hand, their left hand, right? So you never want to touch someone with your left hand, especially if, if they're from like uh, the Philippines, not the Philippines, um, Thailand, Malaysia, I'm sure parts of India, I'm not sure about Indian stuff, but I know Thailand and, and that's a whole new, another story because I was there and had quite the experience, let me tell you, showing up at a truck stop, needing to go to the toilet because you've been on a four hour ride, about to burst out running in there, there's no toilet paper, just a hose, that's right, so, you, so you're like squeezing it in and you run into the convenience store looking for toilet paper or tissue napkins, there is none. All I could get was a bar of soap. They didn't even have soap in the toilet. So I bought soap and yeah, I wiped my, my ass with my hand and soap and you know, it was a, a really hard experience. So I've been there. The other thing is, um, the next thing I saw, I check the toilet, make sure there's no fecal matter around. Most people, I mean, they poop and they leave their shit around the side. I don't get it. You know, why would you do the curious, say, oh look, I left my poop on the side of the toilet. You know, why would you want to pick that up? And we've got fog brushes, you know, toilet brushes to use. It's really simple, but they don't. So someone has to do it, so that's where your manager comes in. That's me, the house manager. The cleaning of the house, that's my job. So, ultimately, um, 
Uh, the second thing I do is I check the sink and the floor, and, I, and basically what I do is I, I always clean the rim of the toilet first, and then basically with the same towel, I clean the floor, and I put that towel in the compost heap. And usually I carry my compost bag, which I'll show you later, to put all the paper towels and the hair, and all that stuff's good for the compost heap. The second thing I do is I check the, um, the sink, to make sure there's no hair. I hate seeing hair. Don't you hate seeing what looks like a pubic hair or someone's hair or, 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 or someone's shave and you see that hair on the seat? Disgusting. So I always check that, wipe it down, spray it down with something else, use a paper towel. Again, I always carry my compost heap. This is my, I shouldn't say compost heap. This is all been pulled out. Every day I put in a new, a new uh, bag. This is a piece of cardboard. This has basically peat moss. You can't really see it. If I pull it out here, and maybe you'll see it. All right, kind of, the stupid thing is not focusing. All right, so you can see. Oh, now it wants to like turn. Well, it's upside down. So you can see that there's actually peat moss, and actually this is old Christmas thread in the bloom there, and that um, ultimately, you know, if I go down like this, there you go. Under the light, you can see the peat moss for absorption. And that, and this is a new bag. Now, what you can do, what you can do is actually, um, I let everyone put everything. If you're going to wipe out a pan, put it in there. If you got food matter, wipe it out with a paper towel, put it in there. That's kind of what I do. After I've done the the bathrooms and emptied out the you know the paper towels that are in the you know waste paper baskets, what I do is I wipe down this counter, and what I do is I set out basically spaces for people to work on. So here's a space here, here's a space here, and I actually got a space right here, okay? Um, I usually sweep the floor, and I haven't swept it this morning, and you can see that there's a reason why. Look, there's little particles and stuff. Let's sweep the floor and see what happens. Okay, this is why it's important to sweep every day if you got tile floor, even, even vacuum. Look at all this here. We vacuum like once a month in America. In Japan, they vacuum every day. Every day they vacuum, every day they clean their floors, and there's why. Always run your dishwasher at night, and I ran it at la last night. I ran it at 8 o'clock, but no one emptied it. So here I am, the first thing I do is empty it. Now, if I didn't run it last night, what would happen is, and this is not that bad. See, people haven't put their, because they ran the dishwasher, and by the way, this is something I innovated, because what I was noticing was some people were putting stuff in there, so having a sign, that basically when you run the dishwasher, and this was basically, someone had it for their bedroom, right? I stuck it on here, I stopped, I'm working, okay? And you just stick it right on there. And basically, we had this thing, but it didn't work. Running, cleaning, it was too small, right? No one paid attention, this is big, it's bold, stop, you know? Why are you going in there, right? So then I basically pull it off. So that's one of the systems that I created for Foundup's house to ensure that we don't get any dirty material because the last thing you need is dirty stuff contaminating your cleaning stuff. So what I usually do is I actually leave this for someone else to do and I just pull out the stuff right here. I can put everything in the, you know, in the dry, in the dry thing here. And basically, I empty it like that. I don't have time to be putting away that someone else, someone else can do that, but what I want is a clean um, dishwasher so I can start putting dirty stuff into it, start filling it again, right? So, so someone else can actually will come up and say, oh look, all this is, all this is dry and put away. A pan, like this pan here, I need for cooking. And I set that up. So, so that's pretty much it that I'm gonna to cover today in setting up. There's more stuff, but basically two things are the bathroom and the kitchen, right? And that's what I do here at Foundup's house um, every day. When you have a house full of 15 people, and understand, that is not a large hacker house. I visited one recently that had three bedrooms with six people per bedroom, right? So basically a max of 24. He's right next to Google. He's a former partner actually of this house and it was just disgusting. And 
Basically, if you're living in a hacker house with 15 other people and you don't have a good house manager maintaining or cleaning your house, you're asking people to get sick and once person gets one sick, everyone gets sick, you know, it's, it doesn't become a positive. Yeah, you're living for free, but you're losing out on the comforts of home. So the whole idea with Foundup's house is to provide that comforts of home, to provide that cleanliness. And the most important thing to me is basically toilet cleanliness, kitchen cleanliness. Number one is a toilet. Number two is the kitchen. Number three is the living room. Pretty much picking up, wiping down the living room. There's not a lot to cover there. Obviously vacuuming. You can't vacuum at seven in the morning on a Sunday. Today is actually our Saturday. Today's Saturday. But you can basically, you know, vacuum at 10 o'clock in the morning, which I'll probably do today. I try to do my heavy cleaning every week. So getting down on my hands and knee, scrubbing that floor, right? I can show you. I'll do a little bit and show you how clean it is now. Before, if you've watched my other videos, my hand was just black. But let's see what it's going to be today. So this is my own organic cleaner that I made. I'm using the old natural bottle. It is, it's really simple to make. It's basically, um, it's citrus fruit and orange rinds that basically I pick up off the ground. I then uh, boil the mixture in order to kill any bacteria that's growing in it to sterilize it and then I cool it and I put it in here it's basically I don't really even have a me measurement but it's actually very concentrated right now as you can see uh, with the lime and the lemon I think it's lemon lime and it has coconut oil in it and it has vinegar in it and um, I'm actually I have a whole pot here that I can show you but basically let's see here's a way to test how clean your your hacker house your house is just spray I just Spray. spray the towel like this so it's nice and wet and then wipe the floor. Now, I didn't do the whole floor, but you can see it's still dirty. I right, use my hand print on it. And if when I first did this, it would have been black, it would have been disgusting. So, as you can see, my floor is getting cleaner. It's still not to the point where there's nothing that shows up, it's still dirt. And that's basically still people wearing shoes and stuff coming in. But do this on your counter, do this test wherever, and it'll tell you how clean your house is. Or if you're at a hacker house, do it yourself to see how clean the environment that you're living in. That's an idea.